Hey, with Eddie Goldman, the famous, infamous Eddie Goldman, the guy who was uh, promoting New York to be uh, legal for MMA. Uh, Eddie, this uh, tournament that Strike Force is doing is, is legendary. It's going gonna, it's gonna to really uh, rock MMA. What do you think about it? It legitimately is historic, and, and I've seen it and done it, been to all kinds of events over the world, and, and seen the entire history of modern mixed martial arts since the early 1990s. And there's nothing ever been quite like this. There have been many other tournaments. The early UFC tournaments with Hoist Gracie were historic because they really established the sport and really built up the prestige of grappling and, and submission fighting. But when you look back on it, they didn't have the caliber of talent top to bottom that this one does. The Pride tournaments were historic as well, but they would also have lots of inequities. They would dip people at different weights. A classic example, Sakuraba fought Hoist Gracie for 90 minutes. Then he had to go in to have another fight the same night. So these, these, this tournament is like better for the fighters, it's safer for the fighters, it's more fair. Yes, this is as, as fair as you can get. They're going to schedule it at, you know, the fights every two or three months, depending on, you know, the dates and all of that. And I think it's something that's, that's, the, you look at the caliber of the fighters, and it just shows you have the Overeem, the champion, and who's had such a great 2010 winning the, the Dream title, and then more importantly, the K1 World Grand Prix title. You have the great uh, Fyodor Emelianenko. You have Fabricio Verdum, who defeated Fedor Emelianenko just shocking the world doing it. You have all that was also guys. history, Eddie. Yeah, all these are the guys that have been champions in other organizations. In, in you, you have two former UFC champions in Barnett and Arlovsky. So Bigfoot Silva was an elite XC champion. All these guys have been outstanding athletes. And they all got together and they all said, we want to fight the best, the best against the best. That's something we know which is killing boxing. There's always an excuse not to fight the best. And that's something that has been a problem in some cases in MMA, where you have the best across different organizations. But with Strike Force, working with M1 Global, and also to a lesser degree working with Dream, got together and they said, we're going to work it out so we're going to have all these guys in the same tournament. And that's why, you know, we were asking questions. Who is considered the favorite? It's very difficult to pick a favorite. I expect there are going to be a lot of upsets in this tournament. Would you say anyone in this tournament has a chance of winning? Yes, I think anyone in this tournament has a chance of winning. There are some fighters that will be have a, a you know a less of a chance, like Arlovsky has said many times he's lost his last few fights. He didn't look that good in it. He knows this is it. If he gets blown out against Kartonov, that's going to be the end of him as a top tier fighter. So what will that mean? Is he capable of rising to the level again, or is it all in the past? Brett Rogers is another it's guy. Another one the dog, yeah. Probably has less of a chance against Barnett. But, you know, Brett, who is Brett Rogers lost against? The best. He was doing well against Fedor until he got caught, knocked out, and he got basically destroyed by Overeem in the fight. But that was by a prime Overeem. How good is Brett Rogers, and can he recover? Can he rebound? We've seen this happen numerous times in MMA. Overeem is an example. Overeem has, what is it, 11 losses or something like that? He's lost. But he's improved, but he's also much bigger physically. He's bigger now. physically, but he's improved in his technique. So he has a, a submission loss to Verdum, and, and he's one and one with Karatonov. How is he going to— And he ended Brett Rogers so quickly. Yes, so the question is, he seems to be ascending. He's only about 30 years old. People can go up and down and up and down in MMA. Unexpected things can happen in an individual fight. That's the beauty of it, because there's no easy favorite. You could say that, you know, a lot of people saying Overeem and Fedor and Verdum are among the favorites. It's probably correct, but it doesn't mean a whole lot. It's just sort of a talking point. They, I, I checked the records of these guys. You have eight participants. Seven of them have fought other fighters previously. Of those seven, they fought more than one opponent before. Every one of those seven has at least one win 
and at least one loss against other participants in this tournament that's just absolutely incredible when when you think about it now again some of those wins some guys have been more recent than others but it's it's something that this is what sports should be this is a great sporting event we're here at the press conference you know that they weren't cursing at each other throwing things uh, acting like it was wwe and anything like that they were all here as sportsmen and even though they will they're all confident they're going to win which is fine that's the way it should be you shouldn't be in the tournament if you think you're going to lose all these guys think that they could do it but this is being run as a sport and that adds to the with, re- that with respect home. and dignity and that's yeah. another reason why it should be legal in new york final question eddie you're the man for this Will MMA be legal in New York in 2011? I think there's a better than 50% chance, but it's very hard to say. We had a demonstration yesterday, February 8th, downtown. We're starting to build a grassroots movement to it, to do this, where I think this tournament will help it, the way this is being conducted. But I don't think anything is set, I don't think anything is inevitable because it's still going to be difficult to do, but I still think we can get it done to give people jobs. But it's only 50-50. I, I think so, because there's a lot of opposition, and it doesn't seem the the bill has sponsors, both Democrats and Republicans, but there are also both Democrats and Republicans that are opposed to it, and we don't know what the position of the governor is. And then, even if it gets passed, they have to fund the Athletic Commission to have sufficient staff to regulate what's going to be an explosion of events. And they already have in the budget cutting the salary of the chair of the New York State Athletic Commission. That is uh, not a hopeful sign. So there are a lot of battles that have to take place. I'd like to see more of these politicians take a stance on it. Bloomberg seems to be on television every five minutes talking about stuff. Let him come out and say, we need the business in New York City. Let him join you and Sambo Steve and Zufa and, and Strike Force and M1 to get this legal. Zufa's approach has been to throw money at the politicians through lobbying. That's been a failure in New York. It just enriched some lobbying firms and the coffers of some of these politicians. I don't think that's worked. We're taking a grassroots approach and that's what we did. We're not supported by anybody, although Strike Force and M1 Global did support the rally that we had yesterday. It's not like this is a grassroots volunteer effort. That's what's really needed. Show these politicians. It's not a Las Vegas casino out of self-interest saying, bring our business to New York. We're not affiliated with any of these businesses, and my relations with Zufa are pretty well known or not exactly good, and I'm, I'm proud of that. But we're still fighting for MMA as a sport. You're both fighting for the same cause. Yes, we're still fighting for it to be legalized here, and we're letting these politicians know the people are pissed. The people are angry that you are banning this sport, that you have an attitude of prohibitionism to a legitimate sport that's sanctioned all over the world and in 44 of the 48 athletic commissions in the, in the United States, plus tribal commissions, plus provincial commissions in Canada, all have it sanctioned and legalized. It should be here in New York as well. You heard it first. Eddie Goldman, No Holds Barred. I'm Bruce Keevil, MMA Confidential, and this is Eddie Goldman. Thank you, brother. Thank you.